Docklands Light Railway from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. The Docklands Light Railway, or DLR, is a light rail system serving the redeveloped Docklands area of East London in England. It extends to Stratford in the north, Greenwich and Lewisham in the south, west, close to London city centre, and east to the rest of the Docklands, London City Airport, and eventually Woolwich, currently North Woolwich. The DLR has separate tracks and rolling stock from the London Underground, but the two systems share a ticketing system and the DLR appears on the London Underground's tube map. All the trains are computer controlled and have no driver. A passenger service agent, PSA, on each train is responsible for patrolling the train, checking tickets, making announcements and controlling the doors. PSAs can also take control of the train in case of computer failure or emergency. Overground stations are unstaffed and underground stations staffed, with a few exceptions. Operation and maintenance of the DLR has been carried out by a private franchise since 1997. The current franchise, due to expire in April 2013, belongs to Serco Docklands Limited, a company jointly formed by Serco and the former DLR management team. The DLR system is undergoing constant expansion, with 38 stations currently on the system. Section 1. History Initial system. The DLR was conceived in the early 1980s by the London Docklands Development Corporation, the LDDC, to aid the regeneration of the docks of East London, which had been derelict since the 1960s. LDDC had powers to secure land in the now derelict docks for regeneration, which it did through compulsory purchase where necessary. As originally conceived, the system was to be entirely above ground and consist of three branches, with their termini at Tower Gateway, Stratford and Island Gardens. The early plan was an underground line, with connections from Charing Cross to Woolwich Arsenal via Fenchurch Street, Surrey Docks, Isle of Dogs, North Greenwich and Custom House. However, things changed when the Conservative government took office on the 4th of May 1979, they ordered the study into feasible light rail options, resulting in the birth of the DLR. The initial idea was to use modern tram-derived light rail vehicles with overhead current collection, manual driving and some street running. The LDDC, however, wanted to showcase cutting-edge technology and disliked overhead wires, and so chose an automatically driven system with third rail current collection, but still using tram-derived vehicles. Most of the track was elevated, either on new lightweight concrete viaducts or on disused railway viaducts, and some use of disused surface level railway right of way. The system was opened by Queen Elizabeth II on the 31st of July 1987, with passenger service starting a month later on the 31st of August. The system was lightweight, with stations and trains only a single articulated vehicle long. The three branches together totaled 13 kilometres and were connected by a flat triangular junction near Poplar. Services ran between Tower Gateway and Island Gardens and Stratford and Island Gardens, meaning that the north side of the junction was not used in regular passenger service. First extensions. The initial system proved to have insufficient capacity as the Docklands area developed into a major financial centre and employment zone. Additionally, the Tower Gateway terminus, situated at the very edge of the City of London, attracted criticism for its poor connections. In response to this, all stations and trains were extended to two unit lengths, and the system was extended into the heart of the City of London, with a tunnel to Bank Underground Station, which opened in 1991. This extension diverged from the initial western branch, leaving Tower Gateway Station on a limb. It also rendered the initial car fleet obsolete, as its construction was not suitable for use underground. At the same time, the areas in the east of Docklands needed better transport connections to encourage development. This resulted in a fourth branch being constructed, from Poplar, via Canning Town Transport Interchange, to Beckton, 
running along the north side of the Royal Docks complex. As part of this extension, one side of the original flat triangular junction was replaced with a grade separated junction west of Poplar, and a new grade separated junction was created at the divergence of the Stratford and Beckton lines east of Poplar. Poplar station was rebuilt to provide cross-platform interchange between the Stratford and Beckton lines. The growth of the Canary Wharf office complex required the redevelopment of Canary Wharf DLR station, from a small wayside station to a large complex with six platforms serving three tracks beneath a large overall roof and fully integrated into the malls below the office towers. The original DLR station was never completed. Once Canary Wharf became a major financial employment centre, demands came to improve transport connections with residential areas in South East London. This was met by an extension of the DLR from Island Gardens in Tunnel under the River Thames to Greenwich and then on a new elevated route paralleling Deptford Creek to an interchange at the major rail junction of Lewisham. Besides providing two new rail interchanges at Greenwich and Lewisham, this branch also served the tourist area of Greenwich with a new station at Cutty Sark. On the 2nd of December 2005, a new eastward branch, running along the southern side of the Royal Docks complex, opened from Canning Town to King George V via London City Airport. Section 2. Current System The DLR now includes 31 kilometres of track. There are five branches. To Lewisham in the south, Stratford in the north, Beckton and King George V in the east, and to central London, splitting to serve Bank and Tower Gateway. Although the system allows many different combinations of routings, at present the following four routes are operated in normal service. Bank to Lewisham, Tower Gateway to Beckton, Stratford to Lewisham, and Bank to King George V. Some trains on the Stratford line turn back at Cross Harbour and London Arena, rather than continuing to Lewisham. There are also occasional trains from Tower Gateway to Cross Harbour and to Lewisham. There are no limited stop trains on the DLR. Each train serves every stop along its route. The northern and southern branches terminate at the National Rail, that's mainline, stations at Stratford and Lewisham respectively. Other direct interchanges between the DLR and National Rail services are at Limehouse and Greenwich. Stations Many DLR stations are elevated, with a few at street level, in a cutting or underground. Access to the platforms is normally by staircase, with very few stations having escalators. Since 2000, all DLR stations have had lifts or ramps, making them accessible by wheelchair. The stations have high platforms, matching the floor height of the cars, allowing easy access to the trains for passengers with wheelchairs or pushchairs. Most of the stations conform to a modular design dating back to the initial system, albeit extended. This design has two side platforms, each with separate access from the street, and platform canopies with a distinctive rounded roof design. Almost all stations are unstaffed, although for legislative reasons the three underground stations, Bank, Island Gardens and Cutty Sark, are staffed, along with a few of the busier interchange stations. Fares and ticketing. Ticketing for single and return journeys is part of the London Underground Fare Zone system, and travel cards that cover the correct zones are valid. There are also one day and season DLR only Rover tickets available, plus a one day DLR Rail and River Rover ticket for use on the DLR and on City Cruises river boats. Oyster prepay is also available on the DLR. Passengers need to both touch in and touch out their Oyster cards on the readers at the entrance or exit to the platforms, or pass through the automatic gates at selected stations. Tickets must be purchased from ticket machines at the entrance to the platforms, and are required before the passenger enters the platform. There are no ticket barriers in DLR-only stations, and correct ticketing is enforced by on-train checks by the passenger service agent. Exceptions to the rule are Bank, Canning Town and Stratford stations, where the DLR platforms are located within the barrier lines of a London Underground or National Rail station. The DLR is used by up to 100,000 people daily, with around 60 million journeys yearly. 
Section 3, Rolling Stock. The main article for this section is entitled Docklands Light Railway Rolling Stock. The DLR is operated by high-floor, bi-directional, single-articulated cars with four doors on each side, with each train composed of two cars. The cars have no driver's cab, although there is a small driver's console concealed behind a locked panel at each car end, from which the PSA can drive the car in an emergency. Other consoles at each door opening allow the PSA to control door closure and make announcements whilst patrolling the train. Because of the absence of a driver's position, the fully glazed car ends provide an excellent forward or rear view for passengers. The current stock has a top speed of 50 miles an hour, 80 kilometers an hour. Despite having high floors and being highly automated, the cars are derived from a German light rail design intended for use in systems with elements of street running. All the cars that have operated on the system to date look similar, but there have been several different types, some still in service and others sold to other operators. A further car type, with quite different styling, is to be introduced in 2007. Section 4. Signalling Technology Originally, the DLR used signalling based on a fixed block technology, but this was upgraded in the 1990s to a moving block system developed by Alcatel, called Celltrack. The same technology is used for other rapid transit systems, including Vancouver's SkyTrain, San Francisco's Municipal Railroad, the Muni, and Hong Kong's transit system. Transmissions occur between the train's onboard computer and the control centre at Poplar. If this link is broken, the train stops until it is authorised to move again. If the whole system fails, the train will run at only 12 miles per hour for safety until the system is restored. Also, emergency brakes can be applied if the train breaks the speed limit during manual control, or if the train leaves the station when the route has not been set. Section 5. Future Developments With the development of the Eastern Docklands as part of the Thames Gateway Initiative and London's successful bid for the 2012 Summer Olympics, several extensions and enhancements are under construction, being planned or being discussed. New platforms at Stratford. Status under construction. The DLR has only one platform at Stratford, which limits capacity and ease of interchange with other platforms. Two replacement platforms are under construction and expected to open in 2007. The first was expected to open in January 2007, with the decommissioning of the old platform at this time. However, although the bulk of the work has been completed, it is clear that there is still a lot of fitting out to do. Full station opening was expected to be in spring 2007, but it is not known if this will also be delayed. Woolwich Arsenal Extension Status Under Construction An extension of the London City Airport branch from King George V to Woolwich Arsenal is under construction. This requires a second DLR tunnel crossing of the River Thames. The projected cost of £150 million is expected to be met through a private finance initiative. Construction began in June 2005, with the boring machine being entered in June 2006, and is due to be completed in February 2009. Langdon Park Station. Status under construction. A planning application for a station at Langdon Park, between All Saints and Devons Road, has been approved. A contractor has been chosen, and construction started on the 17th of November 2006, with the station being due to open in late 2007. During construction, trains may be suspended between Poplar and Stratford, or may terminate at All Saints. Upgrading Bank to Lewisham route to three car trains. Status, Transport and Works Act and financial approval given. There is formal approval to upgrade the lines between Bank Station and Lewisham Station to allow operation of three car trains and increase capacity. More frequent trains were considered as an alternative, but it was found that the necessary signalling changes would be as expensive as upgrading to longer trains and provide fewer benefits. It is expected that the work will be carried out during the period 2007 to 2009. The work involves the lengthening of platforms on most stations, except Bank, together with viaduct strengthening works to support the longer trains. 
Most of this section dates from the initial system originally built for single car operation. South Key Station will require relocating, as nearby curves preclude lengthening. The underground Cutty Sark Station will not be extended due to the cost and the risk to nearby historic buildings. Instead, use of Selective Door Operation SDO, has been approved by the Railway Inspectorate at this station. Other stations affected. Although not on the bank to Lewisham route, two other stations are included in the plans in order to improve operational flexibility. Poplar Station has already been lengthened in advance of the work being done at other stations in order to confirm that the proposed method of construction is satisfactory before committing to it elsewhere. Tower Gateway is due to be converted from its current two-track terminal layout into a single longer platform. However, the exact details of the Tower Gateway work are under review. Stratford International Extension and North London Line Conversion Status First of three contracts let, i.e. under construction. On the 25th of October 2006, permission was granted for this extension from Canning Town to the new Stratford International Station, taking over the North London Line infrastructure, which closed on the 9th of December 2006, and linking the Docklands area with domestic and international high-speed services on the Channel Tunnel Rail Link. Four new stations will be built. Star Lane, formerly known as Cody Road, Abbey Road, Stratford High Street, formerly known as Stratford Market, and Stratford International. The branch will also serve London Underground and National Rail stations at West Ham and Stratford. All stations will be capable of accommodating three unit trains. The North London line will terminate at Stratford in new platforms. As part of the Transport and Works Act TWA application, the DLR station at Royal Victoria on the Beckton branch will be extended to accommodate three unit trains. Additionally, it will have a third platform, which becomes possible because part of the abandoned section of North London line ran parallel to Royal Victoria station. The extension is projected to open early in 2010 and is an important part of the transport improvement package for the 2012 Olympic Games, which will largely be held on a site adjoining Stratford International. The first contract for construction work was awarded on the 10th of January 2007. Upgrading other lines to three car trains. Status. Transport and Works Act approved. Once the work to allow three car trains between Bank and Lewisham has been completed, the only parts of the network unable to accommodate longer trains will be between Poplar and Stratford and between Poplar and Beckton. There is therefore a proposal to upgrade the remainder of the line with the aim of carrying out the work between 2008 and 2010. As part of this work, it is proposed to enhance the junction north of West India Quay which would preclude services on the Bank to Lewisham route from stopping at West India Quay. This would also allow services from Beckton and Woolwich to terminate at Canary Wharf or Lewisham. Barking Riverside Extension Status in consultation phase, route safeguarded. This is a proposed extension from Galleons Reach to Dagenham Dock via the Riverside at Barking. This would connect the Barking Reach area a formerly industrial area now undergoing major redevelopment as part of the London Riverside, with the Docklands. This new route would cover major developments at Creek Mouth, Barking Riverside and the Dagenham Dock Opportunity Area, and five stations have been planned at Beckton Riverside, Creek Mouth, Barking Riverside, Dagenham Vale and Dagenham Dock. The extension is key if English Partnerships plan is to work. In the consultation document, the proposed timetable suggests work commencing in 2011 and an opening date of 2016. Mayor Ken Livingstone is keen to have the extension open before the 2012 Olympic Games. However, the consultation en route has only just begun, and as the demand for construction work leading up to the Games will be considerable, it is unlikely that major work will begin on this until the Games have finished. Thames Wharf Station. Status proposed. This station had been included as potential future development on the London City Airport extension since it was first planned. It would be between Canning Town and West Silvertown, due west of the western end of the Royal Victoria Dock. 
Since the station's intended purpose is to serve the surrounding area, currently a mix of brownfield and run-down industrial sites, when it is regenerated, the development is indefinitely on hold due to the area being safeguarded for the Silvertown link, a new Thames River crossing proposed for opening by 2015. Connaught Road, Silvertown Interchange Station. Status proposed. A site near to London City Airport has been identified as a possible additional station on the London City Airport extension. It would be a possible interchange with Crossrail between London City Airport and Pontoon Dock. However, no plans have emerged as to when this station is to be planned and built. The original extension was designed to allow a station to be built here. It may be located south of the Connaught Crossing. Charing Cross Extension Status Proposed In February 2006, a proposal to extend the DLR to Charing Cross Station, running from either the Bank or the Tower Gateway DLR branches, was revealed. The idea, originating from a DLR horizon study, is in very early stages at the moment but would involve extending the line in board tunnels under central London to the Charing Cross Jubilee Line platforms, which would be brought back into public use. These platforms are on a spur that branches off the current Jubilee Line and are not used by passenger trains. While not confirmed, it is probable that the scheme would also use the existing overrun tunnels between the Charing Cross Jubilee platforms and a location slightly to the west of Aldwych, these tunnels were intended to be incorporated into the abandoned Phase 2 of the Fleet Line. Phase 1 became the original Jubilee Line, prior to the Jubilee Line extension. However, they would need some enlargement because DLR gauge is larger than tube gauge, and modern safety regulations would almost certainly require a walkway to be provided in the tunnel. The two reasons driving the proposal are capacity problems at Bank, having basically one interchange between the DLR and the central portion of London Underground, and the difficult journeys faced by passengers from Kent and the south coast between their rail termini and the DLR. Stations would possibly be at St Paul's, with subway connections towards the Millennium Bridge, City Thameslink and Aldwych for future connection with the Cross River Tram and Charing Cross. Works contingent on Crossrail. Status proposed. If Crossrail is approved, some of the track between Bow Church and Stratford would need to be moved to the south. The opportunity would then be taken to double the track throughout and eliminate the only significant section of single track on the system. The current route projections for the Cross London Crossrail Line 1 entail interchanges with the DLR at Custom House and Stratford and the provision for interchanges at West India Quay with Crossrail Isle of Dogs Station and London City Airport with Crossrail Silvertown Station. Another option would be to provide an interchange with a possible new station on the DLR at Connaught Road Silvertown Interchange, as mentioned earlier. Lewisham to Catford Extension Status proposed. This extension was looked at during the latest Horizon study. The route would follow the southeastern line and terminate between Catford Station and Catford Bridge Station. However, early plans showed problems due to Lewisham DLR station being only marginally higher than the busy A20 road, which impedes any proposed extension. The plan is, however, being revised. See also the category Docklands Light Railway Stations, List of Rapid Transit Systems, Rail Transport in the United Kingdom, and Transport in London for a general overview of the topic. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation Licence, available at www.gnu.org forward slash copyleft forward slash fdl.html.